Is it true on November 30th, 2021, that all crimes were carried out while you possessed and used the 9mm handgun? Yes. Is it true that the firearm that you used on November the 30th was purchased on November the 26th, 2021 by your father, James Trump? Yes. Is it true that you asked him to buy the firearm? Yes. Is it true that you gave him your own money to buy the firearm? Yes. Is it true that you picked that gun up to buy? Yes. Is it true on November the 30th, 2021, when you obtained the firearm, it was not kept in a locked container or a safe? Yes. Not locked. We want to turn now to the Michigan school shooter parents case. Jennifer and James Crumley will be sentenced tomorrow after being convicted of involuntary manslaughter during their separate trials earlier this year. The state says they failed to lock up a gun at home and ignored their son's mental health issues. Court TV legal correspondent Kelly Kraft joins us now with a preview. Good evening to you, Michael. We are outside the Oakland County Courthouse here in Pontiac, Michigan, and tomorrow will be a big day for Jennifer and James Crumley as they will be sentenced on those involuntary manslaughter charges. We have spent the day going through the defendant's sentencing memorandum. You can see right here behind it is the prosecutor's sentencing memorandum, and they couldn't be more different. Defense counsel asking for time served, where the prosecutors are asking for a minimum of 10 years behind bars. They are facing a maximum of 15 years behind bars. This all stems from that awful, tragic school shooting that took place at Oxford High School. This is back in 2021. The trials for Jennifer and James Crumley, they were separate, but both were found guilty just a month apart. Both found guilty of four counts of involuntary manslaughter. Jennifer Crumley, she did take the stand in her own defense. James Crumley did not, but let's listen to what Jennifer had to say when she was on the stand. Was there ever a time where he asked to go to the doctor around this time? I don't think so, no. When you look back at these texts now and you see that there's a demon throwing bowls and things like that, now looking back, do you think, oh my gosh, he had mental mm -hmm. issues? No. You don't deny that in April of 2021, you described your son as being depressed. I didn't describe him as being depressed. I noticed that he was acting depressed. You used the word depressed. Yes, I, he was acting sad. He was okay. acting depressed. He doesn't get a pass because you don't think the teachers did enough. He doesn't get a pass for that. And the blame shifting is only meant to send a message, I'm not accountable here at all, even though I bought the weapon even though I didn't secure it, even though I never got help from my son, even though I could have taken him that day. James and Jennifer Crumley have been behind bars for nearly two and a half years, unable to post bond. They again are asking for time served in this case. But some of the things that when you take a look through this memorandum that the prosecutor points out are these cell phone or these phone communications made by James Crumley while he was behind bars threatening the prosecutor in this case, Karen McDonald. So that, of course, is going to be talked about tomorrow. Also, we are going to hear about letters that James Crumley and Jennifer Crumley's family have written on their behalf and, of course, from the victims' families. That's the latest from here in Pontiac, Michigan. Michael, we'll send it back to you. All right, Kelly, thank you so much for that report. Let me bring in our guests for this hour. Joining us to discuss is civil rights and trial attorney Adante Pointer. Also joining us, trial attorney and law enforcement analyst Andrea or Andrea Lewis. Uh, Thank you both for joining me tonight on the show. Truly appreciate it. I want to begin right there in Michigan with the sentencing set up tomorrow for James and Jennifer Crumbley. Adante, I'll begin with you. Um, just to set up the parameters here, they've been in jail about two and a half years. They're both asking for time served. Um, there's a little bit more added on to Jennifer's request. She's looking to say, okay, if you want me to do more time, it should be on house arrest. I'll stay with my attorney, Shannon Smith. I'll wear a GPS device so you know where I'm going. He just wants to be let out. Um, the sentencing guidelines suggest seven years or so, seven to seven and a half, are what is suggested. State is asking for 10 years. What do you think this should fall? I think this probably falls somewhere around five years versus the seven that 
the district attorney is asking for or the prosecutors are asking for and credit time served for essentially five years or two and a half years that they served in custody. You know, they get good time credits for being in custody so that two and a half years is actually worth more time in custody. However, I think when the judge looks at this on balance, despite the pleas of the prosecution asking for more like 10 years, seven and a half to 10 years, I think the, the judge cuts the baby in half, comes in in around five years, and that would mean that they probably still have another year or so in custody outside of what they've already spent. Andrea, I got to ask you, um, according to the prosecution, they say anything less than the 10 years that they're asking for would be a slap in, a fa in the face to the victims and their families. We do know there's going to be a number of them, people in the community talking about what this was like, the effect that this has, has had on family members, etc. I almost think it's, it's unfathomable that they get less than 10 years. Um, we know for each count, and there's four, they're facing 15, they could get a maximum of 60. I don't think it's going there, but I think 10 years sounds like about what might happen here. Got to get your thoughts on this one. I'm with you on that 100%. Given what happened and given their involvement, this was active involvement. It, this would not have happened but for their activity. It would not have happened but for buying the gun, but for their failures in parenting, but for their failure to get their child help or to pick them up from school. They failed at every possible angle and every opportunity. And that is not something that should be met with a five-year or two year sentence. 10 years would be a gift. And I, I certainly I hope it's more than that. Fair enough. And it is again, as I said earlier, an upward departure from what is recommended. And I think that's it's going to be what happened here, because I agree with you. And it really was all the arguments you outlined there that the prosecution made as to why it should be an upward departure. The other question I want to ask about this case of Dante is they're asking for the same for both. But I can tell you, and I want to get into this, um, this James guy seems to be a little bit of a piece of work. And I'm surprised they're asking for the same. Uh, it sounded like they feel he's even more culpable than the mother. The way he acted was really sort of out of bounds as far as they were concerned. Then he made these threats. We also think, at least they claim, that he gave the prosecution the finger in the classroom. We have a picture. We're trying to work to get that together. But he might have been giving the finger to the prosecution. Um, as far as the threats are concerned, the defense denies that these were threats. But let me give you a sense of what he said on the phone. I am on a rampage, Karen McDonald. You better be scared. This is the picture here where he seems to be giving the finger. We can't show you the finger because of our um, regulations here. But he's clearly, I'm telling you, holding up the finger to the prosecution, in my opinion. He also says in these phone calls, there will be retribution. Believe me. Another thing he says, you're going down, Karen McDonald. Go ahead and record this call. Send it to Karen McDonald. Tell her how James Crumbly is going to take her down. Now, the defense says those aren't threats, but I'll tell you what, they sound like threats to me. I'm surprised they're asking for the same amount of time for both of them. Well, I think <clears throat> what you have here is clearly when you're in his position, he shouldn't be doing anything to antagonize or to make his, his his situation any more combustible than it already is. So that was not smart. He shouldn't have done it. However, it wouldn't be the first time somebody who was being prosecuted for something that they feel is an undeserved prosecution uh, goes off on a rant against those prosecutors who are bringing a case against him. We have a much more famous uh, citizen right now who's up for president who has done similar things, and he's still walking free. So, you know, it's, it's the First Amendment. We, the prosecutors may not like it. It, but they're supposed to be principled. And so if this, if these, if this rant constitutes a threat, then he should be prosecuted. But at the same time, just saying I'm going to take you down because you uh, are prosecuting me, what I feel like unjustly, doesn't necessarily merit a longer prison or jail sentence. Yeah, I agree with you, Dante. I, my, my feelings, if they really feel that way, they should prosecute him on that very charge, which if they believe is warranted, bring the charges.